Most of us know what this is. It's a tube of Gastrogard. When I started to do research for this video, I knew two things about it. Okay, three things. I knew the drug inside was called omeprazole. I knew it was very expensive. And I knew that it treated and prevented ulcers in horse. But the more I dug into the detail, the more I realized that there's way more to know and to understand about omeprazole and about ulcers in horses. So I'm going to share with you what I learned by reviewing conclusions of over 15 scientific studies done on omeprazole in just in the last five years. The first thing this research clarified for me was that omeprazole doesn't actually heal ulcers or prevent them. It's an acid suppressant. It's a fancy acid suppressant. It's called a proton pump inhibitor. Okay, sure, I had heard about that term, but I didn't know what it meant. I didn't understand what it implied. You see, the stomach acid in our stomach, in dog's stomach, in horse's stomach, is actually hydrochloric acid. It's the fourth strongest naturally occurring acid you can find. It's even stronger than sulfuric acid that somehow sounds nastier. Its composition is very simple. One hydrogen atom and one chlorine. The two ions are released separately from specialized cells in the stomach lining called parietal cells, and they combine in the stomach to form the hydrochloric acid. Because when hydrogen is alone and in the form of an ion, it is sometimes called a proton, we get the proton part of the name in the proton pump inhibitor. Because the hydrogen is released in the parietal cells from the reaction of CO2 in water, it needs an active transport to move to the outside of the cell and into the stomach. There's a protein that makes that transfer, a protein and an enzyme that helps it operate better. And all this together is called a pump. There's all kind of these pump in cells all over our body, but this one is specialized in pumping out the hydrogen, the proton, so it's called a proton pump. Omeprazole acts inside the cell to block the enzyme that allows the hydrogen, or the proton, pump to work. And so we have the proton pump inhibitor, or blocker. No H plus being released, no acid being made. But did you get the part where the omeprazole has to be inside the cell? It needs to be absorbed into the bloodstream and then delivered to the parietal cell that will take it in. That means that this paste that you put in a horse's mouth has to get past the stomach acid in order to reach the small intestine for absorption. It doesn't work as a coating or as a paste in there it has to get into the blood. So all this discussion of parietal cells and the like brought me to another learning that turned out to have the pretty profound effect on how we use omeprazole. For us human, but also dogs and cats, when we eat something, it sends a signal to the stomach to start producing acid. And once the food has left the stomach, the production of acid just stops. It's basically on tap. And that makes sense because I think, I'm, although I think of myself as a more of a greaser, uh, we humans really are meant to eat discrete meals. And the same goes with dogs and cats that evolved to have a few big meals during the week. But horses, horses are true grazer. Like most herbivores, they eat almost continuously, and so their system has evolved differently. They produce acid continuously so that it's always available to digest whatever they're eating. And so over a period of 24 hours, a horse's stomach can produce as much as this much acid. And because the acid is continuously in their stomach, the lining of their stomach has evolved to protect itself in a few different ways. You see, there are two distinct lining in the horse's stomach. The top part is made up of squamous cell, and we call that part the squamous part of the stomach. The lower half is lined by glandular cells, and it's called the glandular portion. The squamous portion is way more delicate. It's like the linoleum in a kitchen. It's a thin coating that can take a bit of wear and tear, but to a certain point, but it's fragile. After a while, it rips. The glandular part is made to take the abuse. It's more resistant resistant, more protected. It's like having tiles in your kitchen. It can take the higher traffic and the impact. And because of that distinction, Vet will talk about two different kinds of stomach or gastric disease in horses. There's the equine squamous gastric disease and the equine glandular gastric disease. They do not respond to treatment the same way, and researchers now think they are caused by two completely different processes. To be clear, researchers don't understand very well yet what causes the glandular part of the disease, but it seems to be different than what causes the squamous disease. Glandular gastric disease was only really 
distinguished less than 10 years ago as a distinct syndrome. So we know more about how to treat squamous the gastric disease and ulcers than we know about how to treat the glamour, glandular one. Consensus at this point seemed to be that squamous ulcers are caused by the acid in the stomach not being buffered well enough. And so it splashes on to this more fragile portion of the stomach. And omeprazole and its ability to reduce the acidity of the stomach allows for the lining itself to heal while the acidity is suppressed. However, if the main cause of this absence of buffering is not addressed, the ulcers simply come back. Ulcers in the upper part of the stomach are very common and mostly link to feeding protocol, excessive carbohydrate in the diet, short stem forage, or intense exercise, mostly on empty stomach. So you might think that horses out on pasture eating grass would be less likely than stalled or con, you know, confined horses to develop them. But there again, the complexity of the situation comes up. Some grasses are quite high in sugar, higher in sugar than hay. And horses generally don't chew grass as much as they do hay. Saliva turns out to be an important buffer for stomach acid. So while on pasture, horses can eat 40 to 50 kilograms of grass that could be high in carbohydrate. The high water content means that horse don't chew it as much. And as a result, even pastured horse can develop squamous ulcers. The ulcers in the glandular portion are not as straightforward. They are due to the erosion of the protective mucosal defenses, and so they also benefit from a lower acidity environment to repair and heal. But omeprazole is somewhat not completely effective in treating them. But as to what causes them in the first place, it's still not very well understood. The current hypothesis right now, and from one of the world's experts, Dr. Ben Steich, is that it's caused by long-term stress and frequency of exercise. So not just its intensity, but its frequency. So if we were to bring it back down to what, how to relate to it as a human, we could say that the squamous gastric disease is more like having heartburns, while the glandular gastric disease is more like a peptic ulcer. By the way, if any of this is bringing up question about your own horse or your situation, I do now offer one-on-one -on -one support calls where I can get into more detail about your specific situation and we can bounce ideas over this. There is a link down in the description if you'd like to do that. Interestingly, direct stress, what we think of stress, and that can be measured by a rise in cortisol in the blood, for example, has not been found to be correlated with any increase in ulcers of any kind. If glandular gastric disease is more linked to more sensitivity to long-term discomfort or reaction to unnatural pressure, and, and I say unnatural here because glandular ulcers are rarer in feral horses than they are in domesticated ones. So if that's the case, then horses that have been bred to be more sensitive and more responsive, you would think would be more prone to them. And that actually is supported by some studies. Warm bloods are 30% more prone to glandular disease than other breed of horses, for example. But there are other interesting factors that seem to be also correlated to more glandular disease. For example, the number of different caretaker a horse has during the day, as well as the number of different riders a horse has, has also been correlated. So I find that quite interesting as an indication of what horses consider stressful compared to what we think of as stress. Glandular ulcers are more linked to a decrease in performance than squamous ulcers. So back to this idea of comparing them to, you know, getting a heartburn versus having a peptic ulcer, one being way more painful than the other. Interestingly, the weekend warrior or the horses that are would be competing at the provincial or national levels are more prone to these ulcers than the show circuit veteran. Again, being pulled away from a routine has more of an impact than the actual routine and setting itself. Once a horse is used to the horse show environment, they seem less likely to develop those ulcers. But it could also be that horses that are more prone to them don't perform as well because of the pain that they cause them. And therefore, they do not reach the highest level of sport, usually associated with year-round life on the show circuit. Now, before I get into what I found specifically about how to use a omeprazole from the latest research, if this has been useful and eye-opening the way it's been to me, please consider giving me a like and maybe subscribing because talking about the practical and scientific aspect of raising horses is pretty much all I talk about. So if that interests you, come along for the ride.
So what does this mean when it comes down to using GastroGuard or, you know, its equivalent? Well, here are some of the latest information from clinical studies that I have read. If you're going to give omeprazole, it has to be coded to support to the passage through the stomach. There's no choice here. That is why in the US and Canada, there are only really two products that can do this efficiently. There are way more choices in Europe. So assuming you're giving a coded omeprazole, you need to do it on an empty stomach, at least seven to eight hours after the last meal and one hour before the next one. Horses eat less at night, and so it's recommended that you give the product in the morning, uh, wait about an hour, and then resume feeding. It's just not absorbed as well if there is any amount of forage in the gut. Giving some omeprazole for prophylactically with a non-steroid anti-inflammatory is no longer recommended. There seem to be some interaction that causes issue lower down the digestive tract. Foal at weaning are more prone to glandular gastric ulcers rather than squamous one. The use of omeprazole has not been proven to be beneficial in this position. Omeprazole is not approved for young foals less than six months of age. The reduction in pH in the stomach actually causes diarrhea and other related dysfunction in the GI tract. And there is now a long form of acting omeprazole that can be injected IM intramuscularly every five to seven days. And that also has been proven to reduce the pH in the stomach effectively. It's not yet approved for commercial sales. Whenever it will, it will be nice not to have to fight to paste your horse, assuming of course that it's okay with needles. But still, once every five to seven days, phew, not as hard, and no longer needing to worry about giving it an empty stomach either. While the use of omeprazole in humans and in dogs has to be managed carefully at the end of treatment because of acid rebound effect, that's when you the stomach reacts to the fact that it has a low pH by producing more acid, that doesn't seem to apply to horses. Latest studies show that horses can stop omeprazole treatment cold turkey. There is no need to taper down the dose. Since a tube of gastrocard can cost $50, that can really reduce the total cost of treatment quite a bit. Speaking of cost, I thought at first it was very expensive. My idea was that, well, you know, it's because there's only two products that are approved and they're controlling the market. But actually, when I looked at the cost of human pills, those that are also coded, so comparing similar or identical drugs, actually, it turns out that the cost is pretty similar. It's just that horses being bigger need so much more of it. The recommended dose of for a 1,500-pound horse is 2.3 grams of omeprazole. Although some research lately have found that it can lower the pH in the stomach at a much lower dose. But because of how GastroGuard was approved to be commercialized, vets need to continue to prescribe it at the full quantity at this moment. The latest research in things other than omeprazole to help horses heal their ulcer or prevent them have mostly been inconclusive or very disappointing. Aloe vera, nope. Calcium carbonate, feeding horses thumbs basically doesn't work. Various combination of turmeric and things, nope. That doesn't seem to work very well. Even the use of alfalfa, long considered to be protective because of its calcium content as a buffering agent, turns out to be a little bit more complicated than we first thought. The amount of leaf to stem ratio, for example, is important because it relates on how much the horse will chew. And also, we determined that well, at least tests have determined that feeding alfalfa pellets or cubes, for example, are not particularly protective. So again, having a good understanding of the importance of all these factors, the saliva that is such an important buffering agent, the, the length of the fiber that ends up in the stomach, the amount of chewing that a horse does are all related to help us understand how the horse's stomach should really be working. And as a result, it helps us understand how to prevent ulcers and how to treat them. There's a new product, a combination of peptin and lecithin that seems to be showing quite a bit of promise. When the two are combined and mixed in with the acid of the stomach, it turns out that it turns into this very viscous coating that seems to help protect both the glandular as well as the squamous lining of the stomach. So that's a completely different method of helping horses with ulcers. And the research is ongoing. Some very passionate people are investing lots of time and energy in understanding ulcers, trying to understand what helps the squamous, what helps the glandular. And I'm going to stay on top of that research because it's so important for the comfort of our horses. And frankly, considering how many horses have ulcers, I think it's good to know how we can help them prevent them and treat them once they have them. Thank you for listening all the way to the end, and I'll see you on the next one.